It's time now for the Splash on Civic Center TV. On this week's episode, West Bloomfield celebrates Earth Day with events happening all around the township. Then, Sylvan Lake's annual cleanup took place over the weekend in order to fix up Ferndale Park and Beach. And later, Leon Padell, the host of Lake Views, gives us some tips on how to protect our water sources. The Splash is a production of Civic Center TV. We're a news magazine that covers everything from local news to feature stories. Also, we can bring you the latest from the greater West Bloomfield area. And now, let's dive into the Splash. Hello everyone and welcome to The Splash. I'm your host, Jonathan Jackson. Hope you all had a warm and wonderful weekend. Speaking of the weekend, last Friday was Earth Day and in West Bloomfield, that's cause for celebration. But for students of Shaco Elementary, it was much bigger than that as they got to tour the township for all of its Earth Day themed events. And The Splash's Brooke Allen was there to report on the festivities. I'm Brooke Allen for The Splash. Today is Earth Day, which originally began in 1970. Now in 2016, the kids at Chico Elementary in all of West Bloomfield are celebrating and learning exactly how they can help the Earth. Let's go check it out. Earth Day kicked off with the Chico Elementary 5th graders learning about the importance of rain gardens and the impact they have on the planet with John Rhoda, the West Bloomfield Environment Manager. The kids were having a great day as they trekked from one event to the other and I caught up with Lauren who was enjoying it all. I've seen a lot of like animals and I've seen a lot of presentations about like the rain water and, thing, and then, of course I've seen the car. And what was your favorite part so far? Um, probably seeing the car because I haven't really been interested in cars, but now seeing this and how it like helps the planet, I am actually kind of interested. Jose Hernandez explained the benefits of owning an electric vehicle and then showed me something I always wanted to know, how to plug in a car. I mean, the car in first place is electric, so it uses minimum amount of gas. Things that, small things in the car that, that it does to not use as much gas is like at a stoplight or a stop sign when you're completely stopped, the engine will completely shut off. That minimizes in, uh, fuel waste, you know. So just things like that are what cause the car to be eco-friendly, I would say. But uh, to charge a car, all you got to do is just plug it into your house, plug it the car in, and just while you're sleeping overnight, it'll get a full charge. and. If, the, if you don't charge it, you still have the gas, like it still runs on gas as well. From electric vehicles to aquatic animals, where the star of the show is the red-eared slider. Where Lorna Zuri, the naturalist for West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation, explains to the kids the importance of wetlands and Earth Day. Well, Earth Day is obviously one of my favorite holidays, being a naturalist, and it does really one of those days that brings to light um, some of the environmental issues and things that kids can do to help. So part of the mission for today is just showing them all the great things that wetlands do for us. You know, they're sponges, they help um, filter pollution for us, um, and they have a great job to do. So I don't think that they're not just a beautiful place to look at, they are, but it, they also serve a mission. So helping kids learn the importance of wetlands and what they do for us will help them to preserve them and protect them. So the next time they're there, they might realize that that piece of garbage should be moved or shouldn't be put there. Um, so Earth Day is just helping people learn a little bit more about the outdoors so that they care a little more. The younger you can start getting kids having their hands dirty, um, the better. So the earlier you're exposed to nature, research shows that um, you're more often going to be a steward of nature. So the more you enjoy it, the more you'll want to protect it and preserve it. The kids from Chico Elementary learned how they can impact the earth on this Earth Day 2016 through the use of electric cars, making a rain garden, which may come in handy today, and aquatic animals. Reporting for The Splash, and on this Earth Day of 2016, I'm Brooke Allen. Thanks, Brooke. It's great to see these kids learning about the benefits of recycling as well as conservation. And even more encouraging that the township is putting in so much effort into preserving our planet. And if you'd like to see more on these Earth Day activities, then visit civiccentertv.com slash WB Earth Day.
Over the weekend, though, the people of Sylvan Lake came out in droves to help clean up Ferndale Park and Beach, and Splash reporter Larry Nyland was there to help capture the whole experience. It's 10 a.m. on a Saturday morning, but while many of us are sleeping in, some residents of Sylvan Lake are doing some spring cleaning. The annual event is called the Sylvan Lake Park and Beach Cleanup and takes place right at Ferndale Park. Event organizer Terry Etter told us at least a dozen residents came out bringing rakes, gloves, shovels, bags, and enthusiasm, all in the spirit of Earth Day 2016. With the clear and warm weather throughout the morning, it allowed for time to paint the park benches and the signage. Resident Barry Beard said he just moved back to Sylvan Lake after a few years away and was excited to volunteer his time for such a great cause. It takes work to maintain Sylvan Lake's reputation as the prettiest little city in Michigan, but these folks were up to the task. The playground area was also spiffed up in anticipation of a long summer of activity. Any and all helping hands were welcome on this day. Even this guy couldn't hide his enthusiasm for what a great job the crew had done. And the event was more than just a time to clean, but also a time to meet and greet others within the neighborhood. With such a positive turnout this year, you can be sure to see the folks of Sylvan Lake back out in the community for another annual cleanup. From Sylvan Lake, reporting for The Splash, I'm Larry Nyland. Thanks, Larry. It's good to see even more folks out there celebrating Earth Day in the best way possible, and that's by cleaning up their environment. So a big shout out from all of us here at The Splash to the folks over in Sylvan Lake. And if you'd like to see even more of their cleanup, well, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash sylvanlakecleanup. Coming up, though, we're going to tell you how you can help keep water sources like lakes and rivers safe this time of year. And later, George Moore's newest edition of Sidewalk Talk has the greater West Bloomfield population revealing some rather exotic food dishes. All that and more right after the break. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Civic Center TV celebrates our region's natural beauty, proud history, tremendous accomplishments, and more with Another Angle, a series featuring a unique bird's eye view of our area's landscape. Watch Another Angle on Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. The best way to know when shows debut on Civic Center TV is to become a member. It's absolutely free. We'll send you a regular newsletter with all the latest updates. Just go to civiccentertv.com and click the Members tab. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back, everyone. This is The Splash, and I'm your host, Jonathan Jackson. In the greater West Bloomfield area, water can be found almost anywhere, from our lakes to our streams. It flows all around us, and taking care of it is one of our top priorities. Leon Padell, the host of Lake Views here on Civic Center TV, gave us his input on ways in which we can all help, our, and, all help and preserve our water sources. The Splash's Cecilia Gallio has the story. Hi, I'm Cecilia Gallio with The Splash. I'm here to speak with Leon Padell to learn more about how we can protect our lake and water sources from pollution. The lakes and waterways are a great asset in this area. And if you live on the lake or have a water source in your backyard, you could be unintentionally polluting the water. During the warm months, we start using products like fertilizer with phosphorus, herbicides, pesticides, and other nutrients and chemicals that can actually drain into our waterways. Leanne Padell, the secretary of the Orchard Lake Aquatic Advisory Board, shares an easy way to help decrease the levels of pollutants ending up in our waterways. What you need to do is you need to start at the smallest level. For example, with this pond, you need to have barriers so that when the water comes down, it can be filtered by the plant material. Barriers are planted on the edge of the land before the water starts. These barriers help protect the water by absorbing some of the excess nutrients and pollutants that could drain into the water. It is important to plant barriers on any size water source, like culverts, ponds, running ditches, rivers, and even lakefront, to help reduce the spread of pollution. The biggest reason that this becomes important in the bigger waterways is because the lakes and the rivers drain down and eventually they make their way to the Great Lakes. Pollutants can not only harm the water, but also humans, plants, and animals. 
They can affect many areas of life for local residents that live on or enjoy the water. When these waters start to deteriorate with plant material, algae, etc., it hurts these lakes from a recreational standpoint and it has a negative effect on property values. Some local homes are also built larger on the lake with rolling lawns right to the water line. The bigger the house, the bigger the roof, the bigger the driveway, the bigger the decks, the more lawn without natural areas, it becomes more of a funnel for all this water which carries with it fertilizer, E. coli, pollutants right into the waterway. Other pollutants to keep in mind is using fertilizer without phosphorus and keeping it away from waterways on all sizes of land. Dog waste with E. coli can even spread into the waterway. When you are ready to build a barrier, use plants like irises or milkweeds, and you can also use trees that grow in standing water and suck up a lot of nutrients and filter the water. When you plant barriers, you can really see the results of a healthy waterway. The most wonderful thing is, is that when you start to do these things, you really know it. You're not having these algae blooms in your ponds and in your little waterways. You know, it doesn't look like pea soup. And you start to see from spring through fall all this wonderful uh, life. The lakes and water sources in our area really make it a beautiful place to live. Techniques like barriers is one of many great ways to help keep our lakes and water sources safe. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Cecilia Gallio. Thanks, Cecilia, and also to Leon for giving us that update. We can all help build barriers around our lakes and provide protection wherever it's needed. Water is one of our most precious resources, and it should be treated as such. And if you'd like to see more on this subject, visit civiccentertv.com slash waterbarriers. Well, time now for another edition of Sidewalk Talk, where George Moore talks with people in the greater West Bloomfield area. Today's topic is on the strangest food you've ever had. Hi, George Moore for The Splash. On this segment of Sidewalk Talk, We've got the questions, you got the answers. Let's get to it. What is uh, the strangest food that you have ever eaten? Oh, that would be a, um, a sea urchin from when I was in Korea. So basically a sea slug. How did it taste? Like the military boot I wore. How about frog legs? That's pretty strange to me, but it's just me. Um, for me, I would have to say escargot. Those are the little snail things. Right? Yeah, the little snail things. Escargot. Snails. Uh, chopped liver. What is the strangest food that you have ever eaten? Pig's brains. Brains? Yeah. Well, I was at a business conference in Chicago, and they have a lot of unusual restaurants. But at this place, they served exotic game meats, and one of the things on the menu was lion. And I figure, where in the world am I ever going to get a chance to try lion again? So I tried the lion. Of course, it tastes just like chicken. Well, probably to me at the time would be uh, octopus. <laughs> Did you get any ink on you? And none. <laughs> well, probably uh, octopus. Octopus probably is the strangest food. Getting a lot of octopus. <laughs> is that right? There won't be any left in the ocean. <laughs> I ate a worm at camp when I was little for five dollars, <laughs> if that counts as food. <laughs> was it worth it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it was I worth don't, it. I don't regret it. <laughs> oh, okay. Residents of Greater West Bloomfield area, we asked the questions, you gave us the answers. And that's what we wanted out here in the streets of the greater West Bloomfield area. For The Splash, I'm George Moore. Sidewalk Talk. Yeah, those were some pretty strange foods. I think the weirdest I've ever had is octopus, so I guess I'm in the loop there, but I'm not as brave as most folks. However, if you like this segment, well, you can catch even more clips of George out in the community by visiting civiccentertv.com slash sidewalk talk. Time now, though, for a Civic Center event update. You can find out more on all the following events by visiting civiccentertv.com slash events. It's a great tool to keep you up to date on everything going on in the greater West Bloomfield area. So without further ado, let's get into it. 
Attention all button collectors. Michigan's Button Society collector and historian Chris Parham visits the West Bloomfield Public Library to share her collection and extensive knowledge with the public. Now this is mostly a Q&A session, so bring your family's buttons for identification and care suggestions. The event starts at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, April 27th and is free to the public. West Bloomfield High School presents The Addams Family, a Broadway musical on April 28th through the 30th, with the first and second showing on April 28th and the 29th at 7.30, and the third and fourth showing on the 30th at 2 p.m. and 7.30. Come to the auditorium and enjoy a wonderful play put on by West Bloomfield students featuring TV's spookiest family, as The Addams Family hosts a dinner party for Wednesday's normal boyfriend and his parents. Sounds like that's fun. For additional information on the play or to reserve tickets, call 248-865-6720. Do you enjoy games like bridge or euchre? How about checkers or chess? Well, you can play all those games and many more at the West Bloomfield Parks and Rec Open Game Room. Bring some fellow players with you and relax in a friendly environment for those 50 and up. Although games will be offered to the public, they do ask that you bring your own game supplies. Donations are requested and for any refreshments and registration is not required. But par participants must sign in though. Remember the event is for those 50 and older and it starts on May 3rd and then takes place every Monday and Tuesday from then on from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. On Friday, May 6th, the West Bloomfield Parks and Rec is hosting their Touch a Truck event from 6 to 9 p.m. at Drake Sports Park. Come and put your imagination in gear and get a first-hand look at the police, fire, and construction vehicles most of us see every day but don't really get a chance to interact with. Also, there will be food trucks scattered throughout the area for any hungry attendees, and the cost is only $5. No registration is required as well. Plus, all proceeds will fund their camp financial aid program, so bring as many folks with you as you can. The West Bloomfield Library is pleased to announce the continuation of their popular film series discussion group, facilitated by the one and only Dr. Tara Hayes from Oka University. The next class at film we'll be revisiting is The Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, a tale about a bitter aging couple who, with the help of alcohol, use a younger couple to feel anguish and emotional pain towards one another. Although the movie will not be shown during the discussion, it will be available to check out prior to the event on May 9th at 7 p.m. If you're into dieting or just eating healthier, Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital has designed a class just for you. This course deals with many health concerns our population faces when it comes to eating and food selection, and it can play an important role in controlling variables such as sodium, calcium, iron, and cholesterol within our diet. So why not join these chefs and clinical dietitians in the hospital's demonstration kitchen and get some advice on how to improve your diet and help balance your health. The session is only $10 per person and includes a $5 voucher for Henry's Cafe. It starts on Wednesday, May 11th at 10 a.m. and goes until noon. Registration, though, is required in advance. Once again, it's time for another selection of the 2015-2016 book review series. This month, the friends of the West Bloomfield Public Library are reviewing The Short Nights of the Shadow Catchers by Timothy Egan on Friday, May 13th at 10 a.m. in the meeting room of the West Bloomfield Public Library. Come out and enjoy wonderful discussions with other fellow book enthusiasts. Why not come and experience an action-packed day full of fun and bonding while also dodging your child's paintballs? That's right. At Future Paintball in Whitmore Lake, you can play on a diverse range of courses, including an urban field with a two-story house or Pipe Town, where you'll crawl through these huge tubes. Now, children must be at least 10 years old to participate, and one other child may attend with the same parent for an additional fee. Parks and Rec also asks that you please bring a change of clothes or a beach towel to sit on for the ride back, as well as your own lunch or snacks, because since there won't be any provided. The bus departs from the Recreation Activity Center on Saturday, May 14th at 12.30 sharp. Be sure to visit West Bloomfield Parks and Rec for more information. Whether young or old, keeping one's balance is essential within life, and for our seniors, the fear of falling can be even more intimidating. That's why Henry Ford's West Bloomfield Hospital is offering a program to help reduce those fears and increase activity levels among older adults. These workshops are meant to be interactive, group-based, and skill-building. They teach seniors through an eight-session course offered by the Area Agency on Aging 1-B. To register, call the agency at 1-800-852-7795. It's $15 per class, or you can complete the entire course, and the classes are free. Classes are on consecutive Wednesdays, but no newcomers will be accepted after the second one. Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital offers free tours of their greenhouse every Tuesday, with resident farmer Trevor Johnson leading the tour. Throughout it, he'll teach you all about hydroponic growing techniques, basic plant care, crop harvesting, and much more. There are two tours available at 11 a.m. or noon, and the tour will last about 45 minutes. Remember, tours are limited to 15 people a session, and registration is required 48 hours prior to the tour. 
Well, that's a glimpse of what's happening around town. And if you want to find out more of what's going on in your neighborhood, then be sure to follow us at civiccentertv.com slash events and look up our events calendar. Or you can stay tuned right here for up-to-date information on everything going on in the greater West Bloomfield area. Well, we're going to take a quick break for now, but when we come back, I'll be talking with radio personality Big Al right after this. You are watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Be sure to catch live coverage of Lakers sports, up-to-date information on local events, and of course, non-stop music on 89.3 WBLD, the all-new Lakes FM. I'm Stacy Passini, caseworker for West Bloomfield Youth Assistance. West Bloomfield Youth Assistance provides confidential casework services to children and families living in the West Bloomfield School District. If your family or child is struggling, West Bloomfield Youth Assistance can help. For more information about West Bloomfield Youth Assistance programs and services, please visit www.wbyouthassistance.org or call 248-592-1278. For years, Civic Center TV has been bringing you live coverage of local municipal meetings. The meetings are now available on demand at civiccentertv.com slash meetings or watch the meetings again the following day on Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Hello everyone and welcome back to The Splash. I'm Jonathan Jackson. My guest on the show this week is the former co-host of The Dick Purton Show, as well as an actor and comedian. He is Big Al Muscovitz. Big Al, how are you doing? Thank you very much, Jonathan. I actually wasn't a co-host, I, I sidekick, I don't want. Side. Yeah, let's, let's get that, make that clear. Yeah, uh, there, there was only one host, that was Dick Purton. Yeah, and he yeah. was he's a legend in his own right. You know? I, I, tremendous legend uh, for years and also uh, inducted the National Association of Broadcasting Hall of Fame. So mm. he, he the same day, actually, that Regis Philbin, Regis Philbin <laughs> was inducted into the TV uh, part of the National Association of Broadcasters Hall of Fame out in Las Vegas. It was a huge day. No it was way. Great. Yeah. But listen, I'm here. Let's That's talk right. About That's me. true. That's true. Let's now, focus on I, I, owe, I owe a great deal to Dick Purton. He's doing great, and uh, I, I would not have had the career if it were not for him, that's for sure. How long were you with him and his show? You know, it was a total of 18 years, Jonathan. Uh, I started out part-time with him for four years, and then when we moved over to WMC, CBS, mm -hmm. although it was through, went through many gyrations of who owned that station, but uh, it, uh, uh, 14 full-time years over at WMC, and now I uh, fill in uh, on a fairly regular basis for Mitch Album on WJR. All right. Got to get a plug in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we love Mitch here, too. He's yeah. a great guy. So. Yep, absolutely. But when you were on the Dick Purton show, yeah. now you you, uh, you did a lot of, like, sidekick characters, voice acting, stuff like that. Is that that's your specialty. Yeah, right? a whole myriad of things. I started out basically as, you know, one of Purton's people doing voices and, uh, you know, started doing voices like Bill Clinton, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. My wife's back in it. She's in it to win it. I want to be back in the White House, Jonathan. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, you know, George Bush came along, That's gave us true. eight years of uh, material. But uh, you know what the difficult part is, is, um, is this uh, current election cycle is very difficult because uh, it turns out that on both sides of the aisle, the candidates are funnier than the comedians. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, posing me a big problem. It is, I yeah. bet, I bet. Yeah. And when you're on Mitch's show, I mean, yeah. do you still do the characters and voices or uh, are you more season serious? Or? You know what, it's a, it's a combination, but it's mostly being the host, but I keep yeah. it pretty lighthearted. Uh, Mitch Album is a, you know, a brilliant guy with going in a million different directions of topics that he does. But I'm, I'm a humorous or comedian, and so I don't get too heavy. Uh, when I uh, co-host, we do it a little differently. But uh, Ed Kelly, who's one of my co-hosts when I sit in for Mitch, is a, a brilliant uh, a voiceover person, and he does a lot of character voices. But I'll sneak a few in there once in a while. So, But when I do my speaking engagements, I, I definitely uh, try to throw those in. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So also, let's talk about acting, voice mm -hmm. acting specific. But also, you have done actual acting too, right? I have, I have, um, and uh, because of my tremendous popularity in television, <laughs> your ratings right now are probably going through the roof. That's right. That's but right. Uh, <laughs> I, when I got out of radio, and uh, Dick Purton retired in 2010, my first uh, job that I uh, auditioned for, and I do quite a few auditions for voice, not many acting jobs, as you can rightly see why, uh, is that uh, I actually auditioned for Detroit 187. Do you remember that show I that do. was shot here in Detroit? Yeah, one season, unfortunately. One season. It got better as the show went on. I, I was really hoping it would stick around. Well, I had my uh, uh, 
15 seconds of fame on that show. I actually auditioned and won the speaking role of a uh, polka band leader on the first episode that was shot in Detroit after the pilot. So uh, I was uh, on set and had like four lines, if you include commas, and uh, that was my big break on ABC TV, and I have not, uh, to my knowledge, done any more uh, television shows since then. Oh, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, but it was great winning an Emmy for it. <laughs> so. Do you even know how to, you know, polka, or is, was it more of just a... I actually, honest to goodness, had a few words that were in Polish. I called a couple, like, punchki stores and Polish restaurants to ask... Uh, how to say this stuff, yeah. and and uh, so I did my research. That's you know, good. yeah, That's I did good. my research, but that was fun. It was a, it was a great ex great experience. It was. And there's another character you're also famous for, uh, uh -oh. Uh, Queen Elizabeth. Is that? Oh it? yes, thank you, Jonathan. Royale. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, the, the Queen kept me quite busy on the radio. Oh, I'm sure mm. she did. Yeah. But funny story, uh, very quickly, uh, yeah. is that um, when Kate and William got married, I had been off the air, off the Dick Burton show for I don't know maybe a year or two, Okay. and I said, oh my goodness, uh, how can the queen be on the sideline during this huge event? I mean, yeah, it was now, all over the news. Yeah, right? so I actually dressed up as Queen Elizabeth. I had only done that once before in public for a uh, fundraiser. Okay. And so I decided, and Fox 2 uh, News, uh, you know, my Fox Detroit, actually brought me in dressed as Queen Elizabeth, and I commentated and did... Uh, you know, some commentary on the wedding as Queen Elizabeth. Oh, look, aren't they beautiful, those two? <laughs> They're fantastic. You know, you get the wave and oh, everything. Of course, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I, uh, you know, my kids uh, and wife uh, sincerely appreciated seeing their uh, father and husband dressed up in a dress on Fox 2. But Not humiliating at all, just fun. Well, and, they, yeah. but they uh, trust me, they had to put up with a lot of humiliation oh. <laughs> for many, many years. Uh, but they still didn't get accustomed to it, and I don't blame them. Mm -hmm. But proper therapy has gotten our family back in line. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's also yeah. good. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but you can see I'm desperate for attention. I'm thrilled to be here, and I'm, I'm so glad you had me as a guest. So, All right. Yeah. And I, uh, I also keep busy. I write a humor column for the Jewish News, and I do speaking engagements. Can I get a quick plug-in for how people can get a hold of me? Go ahead. Baby. That's laughwithbigal at gmail.com or visit laughwithbigal.com, which has not been updated in about three years, and my kids won't help me do it anymore. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, it is. I'll hire you. You're young. You know about this stuff. Get I'm, a younger person yeah, help I'll you out there. Get a few bucks on the side. You'll help me with my website. No problem. Yeah. But, well, Big Al, thanks for joining me today. You're, my pleasure. We loved having you here. I, I loved being somewhere. <laughs> that's a, that, you, this is my next big break, kid. This, yeah, you know, from here... It can only go up. It can only go up. <laughs> That's what everybody keeps telling me. <laughs> Once again, my thanks to Big Al for joining me on the show today. And, of course, catch him uh, on Mitch Album Mitch Show. Album. Oh. I fill in from time to time. I put it on my Facebook fan page. There you go. You can find out when I'm going to be on. And look at also his website as well for more information. Yeah, so. absolutely. Thank All you. Right. Thank you so much. Thanks again, Big Al. All right. Well, now it's time, and keeping with, the therm of, uh, keeping with the theme of Earth Day, we thought we'd bring back another episode of Minute with Nature featuring our park naturalist, Lauren Azuri. This week's update is on enjoying the outdoors. Lauren? Hello, and welcome to Minute with Nature. I'm your host, Lauren Azuri, park naturalist for West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation. As a park naturalist, I have a pretty great job, and my basic job is to get kids outdoors, engaging and enjoying nature, and getting adults and families outdoors as well, and learning about the outdoors. A startling statistic is that the average child spends seven hours in front of a digital screen and only 30 minutes a week outdoors. We need to change this and get our kids and our families and even our adults outdoors. We know all of the benefits are there. Kids that spend time outdoors have lower stress levels, they do better in school, um, lower symptoms of ADD, and the health benefits are endless for adults as well. So we should spend some time outdoors. Try and get that green hour in every day. And not just time outdoors, but unstructured time outdoors. Children need to learn how to explore on their own. Um, a stick can do many things. It has a lot of different play features that we might not even think about. So giving kids loose parts and being able to explore and dig in the mud and engage with nature, just not in nature, makes a big difference in their development. Now one thing that I hear from parents is that they're not necessarily comfortable taking their kids outdoors or out in um, trails or out in the woods. One thing that you can do is visit our outdoor natural play area. It provides a safe space for kids to explore on their own because it is gated in. Parents can watch but let their kids explore. There's a lot of loose parts so again creativity plays a big role. They can dig in our garden bin and learn how to plant seeds um, and they can dig in our insect discovery area as well. So it provides a place for them to have unstructured play outdoors reap all of the health benefits and still have parents comfortable. Maybe then explore the trails afterwards and talk to me and I can give you some tips and tricks on how to be comfortable taking your children outside. 
And that's your Minute with Nature. Thanks, Lauren. And if you'd like to see more fun and safe ways to play outside with the whole family, then visit civiccentertv.com slash MWN. We now turn to our other segment here on The Splash, our Person of the Week. This is where we acknowledge an individual within the community who is either helping or inspiring others. This week's recipient is Kego Harbor resident, Karen Meebrod. Karen Meebrod is sort of a public figure within Kego Harbor. She loves the monarch butterfly and has been campaigning for it to become our state's official insect for the past four years. Since 1992, she's been raising monarch butterflies alongside her husband, but 20 years later, she decided to take her love to the next step by urging legislators toward her cause, as well as Senator Jim Marlowe, who agreed to sponsor her efforts through the Senate Bill 812, which has since been referred to the Committee on Government Operations. Karen also works as Roosevelt Elementary School's summer camp director and brings butterfly cages as well as monarch eggs with her to raise at the camp. This past year, campers created a butterfly garden in which 32 monarchs were raised teaching the kids valuable lessons on the life cycle and eating habits of the monarch butterfly. Through all of her hard work, as well as the support of her campers and even the efforts of Kego Harbor City Council, the monarch butterfly is finally getting the attention that it deserves, especially when it comes to both its food as well as its protection. And in all honesty, well, that's all Karen ever wanted, making her our person of the week. If you or someone you know is providing a service to their community, then let us know by sending an email to the splash at civiccentertv.com. We want to congratulate all of those who are making a difference in our area, and we appreciate any and all suggestions. Unfortunately, though, that's all the time we have for today. But make sure to catch us every Monday for new episodes of The Splash and throughout the week for replays as well. You can also look up previous episodes online at civiccentertv.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook, or as you can see on the handle below, under Civic Center TV for more information. For all our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and of course, West Bloomfield, I'm Jonathan Jackson, and we'll see you next time. 